police. No racist police. Can I get everybody's attention? Yeah. We stand here tonight in response to police brutality, in response to disregard for black lives. We stand here tonight for Mike Brown, for Eric Garner, and for Tamir Rice, and for those like them who have lost their lives to police brutality. We stand here for people like Cameron Tillman, like Vonderit uh, Myers Jr., like Rashad McIntosh, like Trayvon Martin, like seven-year-old Ayanna Stanley Jones, the victim of an accidental SWAT invasion into her home where she was shot in the head as she slept. A few other cases. Kimani Gray killed March 9, 2013 at the age of 16. Oscar Grant killed January 1st, 2009 at the age of, 2000, uh, at the age of 22. Sean Bell killed November 25th, 2006 at the age of 23. Malcolm Ferguson killed March 1st, 2000 at the age of 23. Ezell Ford killed August 11th, 2014 at the age of 25. Timothy Russell killed November 29th, 2012 at the age of 43. Ronald Madison killed September 4th, 2005 at age 40. Jonathan Farrell killed September 14th, 2013 at the age of 24. Irvin Jefferson killed March 24, 2012, at the age of 18. Tarika Wilson killed January 4, 2008, at the age of 26. Manuel Larkins Jr. killed February 10, 2012, at the age of 31. Pearlie Golden killed May 7, 2014, at the age of 93. Yvette Smith killed February 16, age 47. These are just a few cases of those lives that have been lost to police brutality, and we've lost many this year and we've lost many in the past, and we stand here as a stand to say that we will not lose anymore, and we are standing here in solidarity with people who are suffering from across the nation from police brutality and injustice. To say that Black Lives Matter seems to be a revolutionary belief in a nation where the possibility that a young black man may have stolen some cigarettes, or that some self-appointed watchman, that some self-appointed watchman was scared enough, is enough to justify the murders of black bodies. This seems to be a revolutionary belief in a nation which seems to make a hobby for seeing minorities, black men and women in particular, dead, unemployed, or behind bars for most of their lives. This seems revolutionary in a nation that criticizes human rights violations in nations abroad, but does next to nothing about those within its own borders. Sounds like that old saying, those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So why do black lives matter? Does my life matter less than a white man's because I'm black? Does the fact that there's more melanin in my skin that may be present in another's make the bodies of ancestors, my ancestors fair game for commodification and make me fair game for murder or imprisonment if I step just a little bit outside a docile and quiet existence or even if I don't? How can we get a nation to believe that black lives matter, that black lives are just as valuable as those of other backgrounds when not even 150 years ago, we were each considered three-fifths of a person? So we stand here to protest police brutality. We stand here to protest racial discrimination and racial profiling. We stand here to demand that our country, our government, our justice system, and our police forces own up to the system, and, and our police forces own up to the promises that they made to all of us as citizens of the United States. We demand the right to be served and protected, not brutalized and profiled. We demand the right to be treated as human beings, as equals. We demand real justice from our so-called justice system and transparency and accountability from our police. We stand here to assert that black lives matter and to assert that we will not forget that we will not simply attend to business as usual while somewhere in America, someone has been beaten or arrested or gunned down or convicted or discrimination against unjustly. We come here to express a myriad of emotions, including anger, sadness, disappointment and regret, but still we dare to keep up the audacity of hope. We are so undoubtedly, so undeniably, so audaciously hopeful that we will one day see justice in this nation. That day is certainly not today, it may not be tomorrow, and it may not occur within the foreseeable future, but each and every one of us should make ourselves, if everyone is not already, unceasingly devoted to this cause, to the goal of fighting injustice and bigotry and ignorance and wrongdoing and opaque, inaccessible institutions wherever they arise. And we just take comfort in the knowledge that we have peers, friends, and allies in the same struggle with us. We are never alone. For those of you all who came out tonight, I would like to thank you. Um, we are, after a while, going to head back. Um, but let us not only seek to come together or to demand justice and equality, or to just become inspired to raise awareness and resources only in times of tragedy. 
Let us not forget or move on. Remember that in any and every one of these incidents, the affected parties could have easily been someone who you know and love. And remember that the pain does not end for those families when the last media van rolls away. Where there's pain, we must hold on to it and use it to embolden ourselves, to light our passions, and to encourage us to seek positive change. The nation in which we live is full of racism, full of bigotry, and full of injustice. Many will deny this. Many will offer logical case-by-case -case explanations, and many may rationalize the discriminatory treatment that black and brown people receive in this nation. And they will accuse countless victims of injustice across space and time of pulling the race card. To them, we just say, open your eyes. Never forget, never lose your passion for justice, and never be comfortable being ignorant. Take off the rose-colored glasses and confront the ugliness in our society. We must fight for transparency, accountability, and responsibility. Where there's missteps, we must be there, and we must ensure that any misconduct is dealt with. Fight for protesters' rights, for national racial profiling legislation, for the rights and empowerment of citizens, for a national police gun violence database, for the change of open use of force laws which encourage exploitation, and we should argue for the transparency and accountability from our police forces. We must join up together in the pursuit of freedom for all, liberty for all, justice for all, safety for all, equality for all, and for the rights of all citizens to feel safe, protected, and supported by the government under which they live. Peace and love to you all, and thank you.